So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. We have an extra, extra special guest on tonight, a professional musician who is extremely talented, uh, world-renowned. I cannot wait to share him with you. He's got some incredible stories. He's overcome some amazing things in his life, and it has helped him to catapult not only his life, but those of the uh, people that he comes in contact with, the people that he coaches. He's an amazing coach and just a great guy, and I can't wait for you to meet him. That's coming in just a few minutes, but first, the Mind Body Business Show. Real quick, that is a show that we've had, we put together with the purpose and intention of sharing amazing entrepreneurs, business people, successful people in, in all walks of life so that you simply can take notes and model what they have done. In other words, copy, because it's much easier to copy someone and it takes much less time when you already have a proven recipe in front of you. You can just follow it. That's what Kevin Roth is here to do with you and for you tonight. We're here to help you to make it to that next stage. And by listening to what Kevin has to say, his stories, everything he's been through, his business, and all of that rolled up into one, you're going to have a recipe for success. That's why I love what I get to do, because you only need one recipe that is successful. You don't need 10, 15, 20, just one. If you find one that resonates with you, you grab it, you hold on to both ankles, and you you use it. You go through it step by step by step. Mind, body, business, three pillars of success. After studying so many successful people over about a decade, these three things kept bubbling to the top, these commonalities. One was to a person, every successful person that I studied, whether they're alive and they're my mentor, whether they're an author of a book or a, a prominent speaker, or maybe they're not even with us, but they also have left the legacy of great knowledge to a person. They all had a very powerful and more, more importantly, a very flexible mindset. Body, they took care of themselves. I'm not kidding. They took care of themselves both externally as, you know, working out, exercising, and also internally with nutrition and things that serve them best. And then business, we all know about that one. Uh, if you're watching this show, you're here because you want to learn more about business. And it's a multi, multi, multifaceted, wonderful world it is, uh, business. And the thing is, one must master specific skills in order to become successful in business and to grow your business. Uh, skills like sales, marketing, team building, systematizing, leadership. I mean, I could keep going on for quite some time. The thing is, just like becoming an expert in anything, you know, that takes on average 10,000 hours of concentrated effort on that one thing. The same with mastering a skill set. The good news is you don't have to master every single one of those and more that I just talked about. In fact, if you just master one, that's all it takes, just one. And if you want to know what that one is, go ahead and let us know. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. I won't hold it in front of you. One skill set that if you master it, then you can then build and completely expand and scale a thriving business. That one skill set is the skill set of leadership. The moment you have mastered that, and as you are going through the path of mastering it, you are building a team and you can now bring in those people who have mastered those skill sets that you have yet to or maybe never will master. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now you become like the orchestrator. And we have a musician here tonight, so this is going to be fantastically fun. I can't wait. All right, we're going to move in to another topic, which is another thing I noticed from the most successful people that I that I have uh, studied and, and those that I've interviewed many on this show. We're approaching 200 now just on this show alone, is that they are very avid readers of books. And with that, i like to affectionately and briefly move into a quick segue that I call Bookmarks. Bookmarks. Born to read. Bookmarks. Ready. Steady. Read. Bookmarks. Brought to you by ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. 
Yes, reach your peak library.com. And real quick, real quick word of advice is when you're getting these valuable resources like reachyourpeaklibrary.com, instead of succumbing to that, that desire to go click away and go check it out while the show is running, I would implore of you to write it down, take notes, because I would hate for you to miss that one golden nugget that Mr. Roth is going to share at the very moment you're off looking at something else and your your mind is not set on what he is saying. And so I always say this, the magic happens in the room. This is just advice. Uh, I literally, I'm running the show, I'm starring in it, I'm hosting, I'm interviewing, and I take notes during the show myself. So I never uh, ask anyone, including my clients, to do things I either am not willing to do or don't do myself. So off my soapbox, just want a quick piece of advice there. Reach Your Peak Library is a website that I had built with you in mind. And yeah, I know it sounds a little cheesy, but what it is, is I did not read myself vigorously for a long time, not until I was age 47. I'm 57 now, so roughly 10 years now. And then I began reading and realized the value, immense value of reading, not just any book, but the right books. And what you see in front of you, if you're watching this on, on video, is my collection of books that I personally read uh, and vet and say, these are go-to books for you. Uh, other entrepreneurs and business people looking to get to that next level. And so I just started dropping them, having them dropped into this website as I finished them off. So there's no rhyme or reason to the order that they're put there. Just go grab a book, the first one that jumps off the page that you're interested in reading and just grab it. And you don't have to get it on this website, find it on Amazon. The purpose is not for me to make money on this website. I want to be very clear. Just want to make it easy for you. There's a button there. If you want to do that, click the button. It goes to Amazon. <laughs> it just goes to Amazon and you can uh, get your book that way. So not every book I've ever read is in this list. Um, only the those that have had profound impact on me personally. And so you can at least know with some degree of certainty that you're not going to be wasting your time. The probability is going to be great that you'll get something out of it because someone else who's successful has gotten something from it. And yes, I would be remiss if I did not say hello to my buddy, Dennis Nurmela who's another very successful entrepreneur who's been on this show as well, uh, who uh, now resides in China and has for some time. He teaches there. Uh, he's from the United States. Great to see you, Dennis. Thanks for coming on. And now that's it. Enough of my yammering. It is time to bring on the man of the hour. Are you ready? Let's do it now. Here we go. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. It is the one. It is the only Kevin Roth. Yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the show, Kevin. How are you doing, buddy? I'm great. I'm really happy to be part of this podcast. I love what you do, man. It's really Thank great. You. And I can't wait. We're going to dig into what you do. And it's it's unique. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Uh, before we jump in, and I will give you the the uh, intro you deserve, mm -hmm. you know, definitely. Right before we do that, real quick, a few housekeeping items. So everyone sees, if you're watching video, that wonderful red and white circle above Kevin's left shoulder. It's the big insider secrets. They sponsor this show. And they give us the ability to give away a five-night stay at a five-star mm -hmm. luxury resort. And it's, it's not a timeshare pitch. It is legit. Uh, so if you stay on to the end live, I will show you exactly how you can enter to win. We give this away every single show. I love what I get to do in that regard. A couple more, and then we'll get back to the man of the hour. So here we go. For all of you that are struggling with putting a live show together, and maybe it's overwhelming, and you want to get a lot of the processes done for you while still enabling you to put on a high-quality show, and to connect with great people like Kevin Roth and grow your business all at the same time, then head on over to carpetbombmarketing.com. Carpet Bomb Marketing, saturate the marketplace with your message. And one of the key components that is contained in the Carpet Bomb Marketing series is one that you'll learn how to absolutely master. And it's the very service we're using right now to stream this, this live show uh, on the for the Mind Body Business Show. And over the course of the past, good grief, 10 years now that I have tried so many of these quote unquote TV studio solutions for live streaming. And I'll tell you, StreamYard is the best of the best. It, it combines supreme ease of use along with unmatched functionality. And so you can start streaming high quality professional looking live shows for free 
with StreamYard right now. So go ahead and visit the website. Write this down. Don't visit it yet. RYP, that stands for Reach Your Peak, which is time to be the name of my company. RYP.im forward slash stream live altogether. One word, all lowercase, RYP.im forward slash stream live. Now back to the man of the hour. Finally, we are going to meet the amazing Mr. Kevin Roth. Here we go. So, phew, I'm already winded, Kevin, and uh, I'm going to very soon hand it over to you to, to just give the show to you. You can just talk the rest of the way. But before I do that, an introduction. Kevin Roth is an internationally known musician and recording artist who in 2016 received a death sentence after being diagnosed with stage three melanoma. He changed the way he thought, ate, and created a life that was purpose-driven and fun. Listen to these words, ladies and gentlemen. They are powerful. He now teaches professionals, doctors, clergy, psychologists, and many others how to discover, create, and live their own purpose-driven life with practical advice that works. I have got goosebumps and chills. I am not kidding you. Like you took my jacket off, you'd see it. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Kevin Roth to the show. Woo. I'm excited for this one, Kevin. This is going to be great. So one of the things, um, I think he's got a little treat for us too, uh, everyone who's watching. So you don't want to miss this. I'm Just stay with us. He's got something very cool he's going to do, uh, and I can't wait for that. Kevin, uh, I'd like to open up with asking about that very powerful thing we all have between our ears. It's a little bit higher, and it's called our mind. And you obviously have tapped into your own mind to help you to overcome something horrible. And thank the Lord you did overcome that. And kudos to you and the fact that you use what you learned to help others. So I wanted to find out from you, you know, you get up every day. You're a businessman. Not every day is a perfect day. You know, there's arduous things coming up certain days. And there's going to be those bumps in the road, those speed bumps. For you, Kevin, when you get up in the morning, what is it that keeps you driven, that keeps you excited, that just keeps you mo- moving day in and day out, no matter what uh, what setback may be falling in front of you? What is it for you? Well, for me, it's just staying authentic and doing what I love. Mm. It's, it's really that simple. Uh, you know, when I was diagnosed with uh, melanoma uh, and they told me that although they removed the two small spots, uh, a little spot on my nose and then under my chin. They said it's gone, but it'll probably return. It's a 70% chance that it's going to return within two, three years, and then you'll be dead. I didn't believe them because my gut told me that I was going to be perfectly fine, which I am. It never came back. But I thought if I only have a short amount of time, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. So I was living in the Midwest at the time. I was actually recording a new album for Paul with Peter, Paul, and Mary called Reawakening. And I had just finished my part of the album. And I asked myself three questions. I, the first question was, what really matters to me? Because, you know, I, I had reached fame and fortune thinking that that would bring me happiness. And it didn't really. Uh, I thought when I fell in love, that would be, you know, happiness. And when the uh, fairy tale romance kind of went back to normal, that wasn't particularly always happy. So, you know, I, I had to figure it out quick because if I was going to be leaving the planet, I wanted to do it in style. <laughs> so it was real simple what I really liked. What was important to me was being a musician and a writer and my dog, Bosco, is a little miniature dachshund. And I knew why, because that's authentically what I am, who I am. Uh, Many people have jobs where it's not really who they are. If they're lucky, they kind of like what they do, but it's not really who they are. Um, And it's important to know your why, you know, why you want to do this. And then the game plan I had was get out of the Midwest and go back to California where I'd lived 20 years prior and live the life of an artistic bohemian. But I knew that I would have to get rid of certain things. One was stress, because stress and inflammation causes cancer. And I was under a tremendous amount of stress three years prior to this unfolding. And by the way, I believe that the cancer came because I literally asked the universe, I I said I wanted to be spiritually enlightened. So you better be really careful what you ask for. (laughs) 
because six months later I got hit with this thing. Uh, but uh, it was certainly was a lesson. I call it a spiritual kick in the ass. So I went to California and uh, I wrote a new album and I was, I lost about 30 pounds uh, on purpose. I had 30 pounds to lose. And a friend of mine said, um, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'll probably try and book another tour. And, and he said, Kevin, you've got 50 record albums, man. Why don't you give it a break for a little bit? And why don't you teach people how you survived and become a life coach? And I had never heard of a life coach. Huh. you know. Um, so I asked what it was. And uh, I forgot what he told me, but it was a real turnoff. And I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not a life coach. <laughs> And then he said, you know, what you did was really incredible because you really did change your life. And think about what you did to get you from barely surviving to thriving. So I thought about it and I thought, well, that was kind of interesting because I really play the dulcimer since I was 15. And I continue to play it every day in a meditative style, but I didn't even know it. So he coined it dulcy meditation. Hmm. And so I reached out to the dulcimer community on Facebook and said, hey, I'm going to be teaching a course on dulcimer meditation and my philosophy on how I survived stress, feeling stuck, and how I changed my life. Anyone interested? And I got a couple clients, and then I got referrals, and then I got a whole business going. And this was just when COVID started. When everyone was out of work, my business started to really grow. And I discovered many things about people that I didn't know. Uh, and just real quickly is people are really hard on themselves. Uh, we think we have all the time in the world, which we don't. And what we put our belief in our system of thinking into uh, is not always doing us justice. And there's a spiritual value to it. And there's a scientific value to it, which proves what I've experienced. So all of these books that you spoke about, which are great books, these kind of self-help books, I eventually started to read a little of them when it, uh, in terms of uh, growth because of my coaching business. And I had already learned all of that on my own, but I didn't know what it was called. Hmm. You know, uh, like books like Just Say No. Well, I knew how to say no to the oncologist that wanted to take uh, stuff out of my body when there was no signs of cancer. You know, hmm. The book about... Uh, you know, get rid of stress because it'll kill you. Well, I found that one out real fast. And I <laughs> just got rid of, uh, you know, I, I just changed the way I thought. So when I coach people and, and in my course, I teach, there's two expressions. One is if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm. From Wayne Dyer. So true. And the other one was when you replace what doesn't work with what does work, you never go back to what doesn't work. I mean, why would you, right? So, uh, you, you know, I, uh, there are little stories about all that, but that's basically what, what I did. And I found out that I really loved it and I was really pretty good at it. And, uh, you know, recently in, a, in a, another podcast, someone had asked me, well, how do you keep doing this every day? And I said, it's not hard because it's who I am. Mm. I don't teach something that I don't live. I don't teach from courses. I teach from experience. And I have an innovative, out-of-the-box mind for being an artist. And, uh, you know, I, I have a theory about the whole thing. Do you want to hear it or you want to get in some questions? <laughs> I am loving what I'm here. And I, I got to pause for just a minute. If you don't mind, it's, it's not hard because it's who I am. If that's not a bomb-dropping moment, I don't know what is. That, that was such a profound, profound statement. It's not hard because I want everyone to hear this and, and really integrate it into their being that if you don't feel that way when you're doing your work, you may be not in the right lane of work. That I found this out myself too, Kevin. I was doing something I loved, but it wasn't what I truly loved. And I recently found out what that was and shifted gears. And my gosh, you what you just said is absolutely true. Absolutely. To the to the bone. I love it. But yes, I do want to hear more. Please, please continue. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a little funny story. <clears throat> I was on a big concert tour. I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. And it was a sold out tour. 
And I picked the songs and uh, the musicians and I that were giving the concert, we got pretty much standing ovations and we were selling a lot of product. And every night after the show, I would go back to my hotel room and I would think you've had an amazingly successful night but you're still miserable. Like, what is going on? What is it going to take? You've got money, you've got fame, you have a sold out tour, and you're still not happy. You know, what is it? And I couldn't figure it out until I got the cancer. And what I discovered, and I learned this from watching near death experiences on YouTube, you know, there are lawyers and doctors, surgeons, many people, including one of my clients, who have been uh clinically dead for a little bit of time and then they come back and there's all kinds of proof about this stuff all kinds of proof uh scientific and documentation but what they come back and they report is that this place they go to they feel quote home and they feel mm -hmm. loved and they feel that this planet earth is kind of like a dream it's like an illusion and if you think about it when you're a little tiny kid before you develop a big ego or not, not a big ego, but just an ego and a personality, you are really one with this innocence and this, uh, this consciousness, everything is wonderful, you know? And then you develop, uh, a, a, the eye comes up and, you know, my food, my, this, my personality. And we go through life searching for happiness and searching for something that'll give us peace. People meditate, they, some take drugs, some, whatever it is that they do, it's all about going back to that longing of home. So where is home, right? So scientifically, when I was looking into all this, everybody, I'm going to give you a really crash course in it. They say that the mind is the problem. That's why I love, I love Buddhism. So I'm not a Buddhist, but I love Buddhism. But if you ask somebody, where's the mind? You can't find it because it's not in the brain. You can dissect a brain and you'll never find a mind. So it's consciousness. So what's consciousness? So you get people like Deepak Chopra and all these people discussing it. Here's the truth. Call it God. Call it Jesus. Call it Buddha. Call it Peter, Paul, Mary. Call it mind. You will never know because it's formless. It simply is. It's the first cause. And I'm not talking religion. I'm talking spirituality. I'm talking about think about it. The science is saying space is expanding. Into what? <laughs> Into what? So when you start to learn that all the ancient teachings, spiritual teachings, are now matching science, okay? These are scientists. Quantum physics says there's nothing here. There's nothing here. We're seeing things, but there scientifically is nothing here. So I don't want to go deeper into that, but when you get that, in your head, all the problems that you face become less. And you realize you don't need the stress. You don't need the illness. You don't need a lot of money. Right? What you need is success, which is your health. If you got your health, you've got your first couple million. You need something to do, someone to love, and something to look forward to. And if you can find that through Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad, or however you find it, it's all the same thing. But it's not what you think it is. It's not in worldly possessions. It really, really isn't. That's not to say that you can't be rich and happy, although I know more happy poor people than I do. I mean, I know some rich and famous people, and I have a cousin who's got more money than anybody I know put together. He's got foundations. He's relatively happy, but he builds homes and then he he sells them because he wants to face the East. He builds one and he wants to face the West. You know, there's nothing that feels really settled. He's a great guy. Uh, but when I talk to him, he's content. But I don't hear happiness. So, and, and he's a pretty spiritual guy. And he's actually one of my favorite people in the world. But I was crossing the street the other day and I saw three uh, workers having a tacos and beer. They didn't look like they had a lot of money in their pocket. They were at a corner taco. Right? They were kind of overweight workers. They were laughing. I thought to myself, I haven't laughed like that. I don't know. In when. I mean, I laugh. I have a good time, but not like that. You know, yeah. so I'm walking around with money in my pocket. I don't know what they've got in their pocket. I wouldn't think a lot, but they're happy. So that's the key to success. Mm. 
I love it because it's so true that, and we've heard it how many times over our lives, money does not buy you happiness. By itself, it doesn't. It can be a catalyst to help you if you choose it wisely enough uh, to actually create more happiness in your world. But yeah, it often comes with a lot of stress in trying to find out how to make more of it and all the other things. But, you know, it's I look I look at it as we all have a choice in every one of us. We're going to be put through circumstances. You had a melanoma. My wife's had breast cancer. Uh, I've had covid and my my dad is um, going through dementia and we're going through a lot right now. And a lot of other people could crumble at that and think, my God, everything is going against me. And I just turn it around and say, you know what? I'm blessed to be able to have these family members that I get to help and take care of instead of wallow in the pity. Because I always say, I love this one quote. I didn't come up with it, but uh, real quick, you can let your circumstances affect your attitude or you can let your attitude dictate your circumstances. Yeah. And so when bad things happen, we're human. We will react angrily upset will be depressed it but the point is how long are you going to let that happen how quickly are you going to turn it into something that it, it doesn't need to be right there's no need to just wallow it and just cry and complain yeah you can get off your chest let it out but then move on and look at all the wonderful blessings you have in your life yeah and you know the other thing that's important along with that because that's absolutely true is most of the clients that i talk to are very hard on themselves Mm -hmm. And cancer taught me self-compassion and how I found it was that um, uh, a nurse who I was uh, seeing showed more compassion and empathy towards me than I showed towards myself. You know, I'm an A-type personality, so no matter how much money I had, how much more could I make, how many more albums, how many more TV shows. And one day, in fact, it was the day that I got uh, a call from the oncologist that said, we're in trouble here, buddy. I walked through my apartment and I said out loud to nobody, just me, don't worry, buddy, we'll get through this. Those were my exact words. And I thought for half a second, who are you talking to? And yeah. I didn't know I had a friend inside myself. So I go easy on myself. You know, I teach, uh, you know, don't get upset and ride the surfboard. These last couple of days I was talking to you before the show have not been fun days. I've had a lot of problems and I got pissed and that's okay. Okay. With what I've been through, I'm supposed to be pissed, but I didn't hold on to it. There you go. And I didn't hold on to it. Okay. It's not a feeling that's worth it. I don't want to push it down, but I looked at it. I teach mindful meditation, uh, mindful awareness. So I, I let it breathe. And I said, what did you do or not do that created the situation? And how can you not do it again and adjust for it? And, it was interesting what came up, you know, and that's something that I have to look into. So just because I'm a coach and just because it seems like I know everything, I'm a human, you know, I still screw up and, but that's life. That's what it is. That's how you learn. Yeah. It's so much wisdom and all that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I used to be a certified personal trainer and you talk about being hard on yourself. We are, we are all our own worst critic. We will do more for others than we would do for ourselves. All that's true. And let's say I've got somebody, a client, I'm, I'm saying, give me 10 push-ups," and they can only do five and they get up and they're shaking their head and in their mind, they're kicking themselves in the butt for not doing all 10. And I, I look at them, I go, what are you doing? It's like, I failed. I didn't do all 10. I said, look, stop kicking yourself in the butt for the reps you didn't do. And now I want you to literally take your hand, go like this, put it up behind your back and pat yourself on the back for the reps you did do. Yeah. Because yeah. you went to the, as far as you could. That was your limit now today. Yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. maybe a week from now, you do another one. You'll get up to six. The next, you know, you'll keep going up. But always give yourself credit for what you have done, not for the failures that you put in your own mind that you think you failed on something when you are extremely victorious in getting that done because how many others are even working out at all? Yeah, as an example? yeah. have a attitude of gratitude. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and if, if people want to start the day in a great way, just think whatever you want to thank God. Um, I prefer to thank God and just say, I thank you for this view I have because nobody else in the world has this view at this very moment. I thank you for the, my sight. Thank you. And I just I just rattle it off as quick as it comes mm -hmm. to my mind. It could be corny. It could be dumb. But if I say it out loud, I'll do it in the car. And it just sets you up for a phenomenal day. And if you do that as a habit, then you're always in an upbeat mood. And yes, 
like Kevin, you have those bad days. Every you know, you deserve to vent. You deserve to let it out. You deserve to swear, kick, whatever happened, whatever makes it feel better. But then get over it as fast as possible. Don't let yeah. it rule your life because life, like you say, is too short and it's too precious and it's too wonderful. And let's all enjoy it as much as we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you, you mentioned something, a dulcimer, and I had not ever seen one of these before. I had not even heard of the word before. And I have a feeling you might have one nearby. Is there any chance you could uh, show that to the peeps and uh, explain well, what that beautiful you, thing for is? For those that are not watching, listening, it's sort of in an hourglass shape. And it has four strings. This is one of many dulcimers. I sell them. I, you can get them online. I teach you how to play it. It's a very simple instrument to play. I've taught it in elementary schools. And it, just a little bit of how it sounds. You know, on my website, I give a free uh, stress buster thing. It's five minutes. And during the five minutes, I play the dulcimer. And I also teach a breathing technique, which is just real simple. Inhale for four, hold for four, let it go for four. Uh, do that several times. And then you hear this. And I play this kind of thing every morning. And it works with your subconscious because you can think about what you want to do during the day of what you have to do, but what comes through is what you should do, what's good for your soul. So imagine listening to that and having a really great cup of uh, coffee. That's how I start my mornings. Yeah, and as we were prepping for the show right before you were doing that, and it was it's so calming. It's got a it's like being next to the ocean and hearing the waves come in. It's just got that kind of feel to it. Yeah. Well, the, the album I made, Dulce Meditation, is an hour long, and the background is the ocean, the ocean waves. Or uh, I have one with the ocean and one with the rain. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Dulce Meditation. All right. Where can people get that? Is that at, uh, is that at Kevin Roth Music? Yeah, Kevin Roth Music, or it's on uh, Apple or iTunes or something like that. Yeah, Dulce Meditation. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. And on that note, that's a perfect segue. What I'd like to do is dig a little deeper on what it is you provide to your coaching clients. We had a little chat right before. Uh, so definitely give the different layers that you offer. I'll put up your website uh, as a backdrop. If you're if you're OK with that, that you can have the moment to let people know what it is you do, who you do it for and how they can get in touch with you to maybe uh, get together and see if you can help them going down the road. Would that be cool? Uh, sure, I'm, uh, I'm not uh, opposed to nice publicity like that. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, the people that come to me are come to me because they're stressed or they feel stuck in life. They're just not happy. The some come because they want to lose weight, which I have a program for that, that's really a lifestyle change. Uh, some want to start a business, but they don't know what they want to do. So the way I work is... I work with individuals. They're about 45 minute sessions. Uh, we have an initial free 30 minute interview to see if we jive because I don't every client. And you want to be sure that whoever is your coach or mentor that you, you have a resonance with. And then we talk about uh, who they are, what matters, why, and we talk about a game plan. And I work with uh, you know professionals, I one of my clients is a doctor. One's a, a psychotherapist. I had one who's clergy. You know, they're all professional people that are looking uh, to change their life and become happier. And they go to my website, kevinroth.org, and they, uh, you know, they see my story. They hear or they've heard me on a podcast, and they say, "I like what you're saying. I'm not sure how to do it." because I've read a lot of books or I've done things and I start, but I don't, I don't know. It kind of fails like a diet and there's a reason for that. So uh, that's what I enjoy doing with, with my clients. And for those that can't afford a personal coach, um, I have a, a general course, kind of an outline of what I do on kevinroth.teachable.com. And I think that's on my website too. That's like one ninety nine or something. I think that's what the price is. Uh, and then people take those eight mod modules and then they have an opportunity to talk with me afterwards. So I sort of 
teach what I did and what I do, you know, um, and that's what I love doing. I love, what I love about it is when my clients, I see my clients on Zoom, their face is one way uh, when we begin the conversation. And by the end of the conversation, they're smiling and they're happier and they feel like they've been, uh, well, a client said, I've been mentally massaged when my heart has been massaged. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds nice. That's got to be like, the most wonderful feeling in the world. I used to uh, speak from stage and would teach neuro-linguistic programming to mm-hmm. our audience. And uh, the same thing, you know, they would walk through the door on day one. It was a two day mm-hmm. seminar and they, they had that look, you know, they're frumpy, they're, they're disheveled, they're looking down, they're not happy. And by day two, they come in with the biggest boisterous smile and they're wide open and happy and elated because we take them through some processes, change their mind, their state, they do it. Um, and that's what you do for your your clients. Maybe not NLP, but the outcome is the same. Sounds like it. And that's a, a very that's an amazing gift to be able to do that for people. Wouldn't you think, Kevin? Um, do you feel that way? I, I, I do. You know, one of the things I teach is NLP. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have lots of little side courses that people take for me in workshops. Uh, it's more rewarding than a standing ovation in a way for a performer's ego because when you hear somebody say you've changed my life with tears in their eyes that, that's something that lasts beyond a concert you know i had a client i don't really talk about uh, you know I, I have a very private kind of thing i don't talk about other clients but i had one woman whose husband died um years and years ago and she had a tremendous amount of guilt about it and I put her through a sort of a ceremony kind of thing where uh, at the end of it, she felt like she'd just gotten out of jail. And yeah. she had told me at the end of our sessions, I mean, she was on Zoom and she she had tears in her eyes. Like she kind of started to get me all choked up. And uh, it just changed. And th- the reason that I can do this and I can do it pretty well came to me at a stop in the car about five years after the cancer thing went away i was sitting there and out of the blue i thought how did you survive that they gave you a 70 percent chance of of dying and, and how did you do it why how why did you get a break like that and what came immediately into my mind is so you can show other people how to do it mm. so that's what it is for a while i gave up my music career but now I combine the music with it. And then when I go out and I, I do personal talks, they say, oh, could you give a little mini concert with it? And I throw that in. That's kind of the fun part, you know. But uh, so far, that's what keeps me going. Um, I, I try and stay a little humble. I talk with more authority than I actually <laughs> feel. Um, but uh, I if, if I don't feel good at the end of a session, uh, I don't feel good all week long. So I make sure that I feel good, which means that they feel good. Um, and I only teach from experience. And I also teach during the week. So if you come to me, let's say on a Friday afternoon for a session, I don't stop thinking about you until next Friday. If I see a video that I want you to see, I shoot it to you. If something bothers me during the week, I'll think about it all week long, which is why I don't take 100 clients. I have a very mm-hmm. limited amount of people I'll work with. Because I want to see that look on your face change the way it didn't change before. Now, what you do with the information is up to you. You know, um, I'll just tell you really quickly. I worked with a guy for about three months uh, because he was being transferred to Germany. And uh, he was too busy. So we worked out the fact that he would drop uh, six of the things that he was too busy with, which was teaching. And we got at the end of the, the three uh, sessions and he, and he learned a lot from me, but I said, how do you feel now that you have this free time to do this contemplative work? He said, I feel so much better because I've got so many other things I want to teach. And I'm thinking you like, you didn't get it, dude. It's like, you're supposed to not do things so yes. that you have the time to contemplate, but he got what he got and, uh, he thanked me and, you know, he keeps in touch. <laughs> so my job is to deliver honest, good information, and also to learn from my clients. I learn a lot from my clients. Ooh, I don't hear, I don't 
hear that very often that I get to learn from my clients as well. So I'm going to drop one for that. <laughs> my goodness. Uh, yeah. And the thing that does shine through about you, Kevin, you opened up by saying this, that um, what get, keeps you driven and keeps you going every day is staying authentic. Those were your words. And I, I, I hung my hat on those because throughout this chat, that's very evident that you walk that walk. Uh, you don't just talk it. You are a person who really cares about others, who cares about their results. And it keeps you up at night if they're not getting the results or if you haven't got them to that finish line yet. And that's just a testimony to what a wonderful person you are. And the fact that you went through what you've gone through, your life experiences, the, the good times, the bad times. And you've taken all that, wrapped it up in a beautiful package to teach others. You don't have to go through this. Um, you can you can come out the other side or if you do go through this, you can come out the other side like you did. So I appreciate you for what you're doing. I love getting to interview amazing, beautiful people like yourself. So I appreciate you for coming on. We're not done yet. I'm just I'm, 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 I'm over flattered, but thank you. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, you know, you are a very acclaimed musician. I mean. I that's I, I was watching uh, music uh, and you were doing like this interview style video is very well done, by the way. And you were playing different tunes in front of crowds and they were giving you the standing O's. And yeah, that can't that does feel good. A standing ovation. But like you said, when you help change someone's life for the better, there's nothing, nothing that compares. I did it from stage. And when you're doing NLP from stage, you can see everybody. It's amazing that you can see everybody, no matter how big the room is. And yeah. you can see some are crying, some are smiling. Everyone's reacting differently, but you're having an impact. And when they come through the doors the next day and they're thanking you left and right, and it's just a blessing. I didn't do it. I just walked them through something I learned. And right. they they did the quote unquote work, which really isn't that yeah. much work. They just and followed instructions and they got the result they came for. Yeah, and, and that's that's the satisfaction that we get from doing this work and that we get when we learn from other people. But, you know, you brought up something about being authentic. It is so much harder to, you know, uh, be something you're not, you know. I mean, I hate kiss-ass corporation. I just hate it. I hate it. There's no reason for it. You know, the way I get clients, I don't do a lot of advertising. I just talk to people. Yep. One to one old fashioned thing. How do I stay relatively happy? I keep my life as simple as I possibly can. I learn to turn off the phone. Okay. I learn to not check messages. We're too connected to everything outside and we're not connected enough inside. So people who are performers or artists, they do their thing and people do meditation and people do yoga and people do all kinds of things to get back to that longing of home, which is, who are you? Who, who are you really? You're not the head of the corporation. You're not just the guy doing mind body business. You're not, I mean, talking to you, you are you, you know, you are absolutely authentic and that's why you do what you do, you know, but there's a, uh, a lot of people who think, well, change is just, it's really hard to change. I have a job that pays the bills. It's harder to stay where you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They just don't they don't know that yet because they can't see through the forest that they put themselves in. Yeah. Yeah. And but when they find out they 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 change. And I don't think anyone puts themselves in the forest intentionally. I think it's no. really and uh it's exactly. you know, life life can be hard. But if yeah. you yeah, if you simplify it, it it's much easier and, and you can live a life that's more joyous for sure. And you just you just put the nail in the coffin, you said it again. I was just gonna comment on that that simplifying your life, make it easier. And that's quite often, I believe, and you probably have seen this, why the wealthy are not happy because they have so overcomplicated their life to get those riches and continue to move forward and get more. Uh, those that are standing on a street corner eating a hot dog and drinking a beer who aren't worried about all that are happy as heck because they have a simple yeah, life. Yeah. Funny. Isn't it? When, when you look yeah, at it. yeah, ironic, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If I so just if, you, if, if you're successful, I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah, and so that's why you know, when, you know, if I consider myself successful, and there's certain, I consider myself successful in the days that that I, I I'm I'm doing okay, uh, but you know I do charge. 
I'm a coach. This is my business. But if I see somebody come to me and they say, I don't have any money, but I really need help. My job as a human being is to help them. I don't know that I'm going to take them on for six months gratis, but I can direct them. I can talk to them. You know, people just want to be heard, which means they want to be loved, which means they want to be themselves and accepted for that. Gosh, I just, I so hope everyone watching and listening to this resonates and integrates what he just said. Kevin, okay? that was, you know, there's so much synergy between how you and I think. I love it. I'm get, I'm just, I'm not, I have got goosebumps everywhere <laughs> underneath this jacket. I'm, it's just enthralling. I love this. And, and a, I wanted to say a quick thing about I do charge. Thank you. And I hope you charge. I hope you charge a lot of money to those that can afford it. And, and some to those who cannot or don't think they can, because they will take what you have to offer that much more seriously. And they'll yes. get a better result from it when they have more skin in the game. And here's the thing. I wish upon you, Kevin, the blessings of an amazing amount of wealth, because I know what you'll do with that wealth is you'll scale and help more people. That sounds like a good plan. And, and if it's meant to be, it'll be, it'll be, you know, I, I, I was rich at one point and uh, I was miserable. Uh, I remember the day I had over a million dollars and I called my father and he said, congratulations, don't get too uh, attached to it. <laughs> and sure enough, the stock market crashed. And then I invested in the real estate market, made a lot of money, then that crashed. And uh, then I was almost broke for a while. You know, everybody who's re kind of really successful <laughs> goes bankrupt a couple times. I didn't quite hit bankruptcy, but I, I built myself up after the cancer thing, which was fairly expensive, um, to the place of doing what I love and making enough of a living uh, to, to do the things that I want to do and to help the people I need to help and, uh, you know, stay open to what the universe sends me, like you. <laughs> and, and it's a two-way street my friend uh my gosh i'm so glad our paths crossed do you do you talk to many younger folks like in their 20s maybe early 30s uh, and the reason I ask, pardon i would love to but when i started this covid started about two and a half years ago and the colleges were shutting down in person um but i would love to if anyone listening out there wants to invite me to come as a speaker yeah because they think you know, 20 year olds are like 40 year olds now. So, and it's an important uh, demographic because they're deciding what they want to be and what they want to do. And this planet's in a lot of trouble. I mean, with the, uh, the uh, you know, global warming and everything like that. So there, you know, I'll tell you, this is the absolute truth. I've traveled all over the place and met a lot of people. It may seem that people are real jerks when you watch the news. But there's a mostly really good people out there. People are, you know, most are very, very kind. I've been taken into my life by many of them. So talking to younger people uh, helps them do, do them, which helps everybody. Because when you're authentic and you love what you do, it kind of radiates through. And one of the reasons I was thinking about it is even myself, when I was at that age, uh, I was a lot more materialistic in thinking and I wanted things. I wanted, you know, boats and cars and houses and all the wonderful things that I didn't have growing up or my family didn't have. And to be able to run into someone like you who's gone through the, the ups and downs and hurdles and had the money and lost the money and brought it some back and knows what the key to happiness is that is a powerful statement to make to somebody at a stage in their life where it would, you know, basically save them many years of anguish going forward. Yes. But I'll tell you the truth and your listeners, the truth it's work. It's mindful awareness. Every day you have to check in and say, why am I doing this? How do I feel about this? Is this right? Is this wrong? Uh, you have to be able to do something I call ride the surfboard. Out here in California, there's a lot of surfers. None of them ever stay on the surfboard all the time. So you have to know how to get back on. Uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this last two days, I've, I've had everything kind of go wrong, you know, and, and I kind of blew up. And then I thought to myself, okay, you don't need to get this angry. You need to relax and know that it's just something that your mind is telling you is huge. But look at the facts, dude. It's not huge, okay? I told you what the problem is, but I don't want to share, but I called somebody and they're fixing it. You know, 
it was an inconvenience. I've been in, in hotels for a couple of nights. The world didn't end. And my favorite saying, not my favorite, but my go-to, it's not cancer. Mm. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Cancer. That's a bomber, isn't it? <laughs> I so agree. I so it, agree. It, it's not it's not the end. It's not, <laughs> there he goes with the bomb. You know, I don't like where they're aiming though when they go down, man. You know, it's kind of right where I'm sitting. Um <laughs> No uh, guests were harmed in the filming of this broadcast, just to put that in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have to kind of put it into perspective. And um, you learn by, you know, you have to have the darkness to know about light. So there's suffering, and it's only an illusion. You know, we're only here for a speck of time. Where we come from and where we're going, nobody can figure that out. You know, it, it's, it's, it's ethereal. Uh, so you might as well make the best of it and that is knowing in your gut and in your heart and in your head what is important why and what to do about it so when someone calls you up and they're stressing you out you know what's important is i'm not doing this why because last time i got all stressed out for a long while i got sick i mean there's scientific proof that says that oh, yeah. when you're unhappy you get sick uh thank god i'm a musician it really helped heal me um, and I just make a plan. I say, you know what? I'm not gone there anymore. I, I, you know, other things come up because they're going to. And the more you practice it, uh, the better you are um, at it. It's just mindful meditation. I forget the guy's name who's a Buddhist that just recently died. What a beautiful, beautiful man. Fat something or another. Or another. Um, he, he's just in the news. 95. He died at 95. Wow. And he taught my... He, and he's lots of books and things like that, mindful meditation. He's a, he's a monk. He's a Buddhist monk. Buddhism is wonderful. I'm not a Buddhist, but it's, it's wonderful stuff. Just, and it's free and it's easy and there's no guilt. It's great. <laughs> one of the best pieces of advice I got from one of my mentors was uh, always have the outcome in mind. Know what your, your desired results are. And what that means is before you're about to take on a task, whether it takes time or money or both, then be very cognizant about why you're doing it. What is the result you're looking to achieve? And when you do discover that result, if it's not compelling enough, it's not something you should do at all. And there's a, I used to be, I would call myself a seminar junkie. I used to go to anything and everything. I'm in Southern California and they were always around. All hotels were always running something that was business oriented. And I just loved, I loved being around the people. And I just kept going and going and going. And one day I was at another one <laughs> and my mentor, he texted me. I was, I was putting posts on Facebook that I was there. So he knew where I was. He goes, hey, man, where are you? I'm like, OK, here we go. So I told him and he, he, he responded with one word that changed everything. He said, why? Mm -hmm. And I knew exactly what he was asking. He's like, what's your outcome? And he goes instead. And it turned out his home at that moment was 10 minutes away. <laughs> he said, hey, man, you should leave that and come here. My dad's making sushi. Let's hang out. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? And so respectfully, I waited till the break. And then I went and I left. And I thought yeah, from yeah. then on, that, that's stuck in my head. So if you're, yeah, if that's, yeah. you know, for everyone out there, exactly what Kevin is saying is know what you, your why is. You know what compels you? What is your passion? What do you like doing? There are things you're going to do. Like, Kevin, do you ever do anything during your business? that's getting them the result you want. There are steps along the way that are, are not pleasant to go through. Am I right? It's not like a hundred percent just euphoria. There are yeah, things, arduous yeah. tasks that must be achieved to be successful and get success for your clients. So I don't want to paint that picture either. That's just a perfect rosy petaled uh, no, walkway no. all the way there. You know, I, you know, I'm not one of these bubbly, go for it, go for it, coach. You know, I don't like that stuff. Yeah. I tell my clients that, you know, some of the crap I go through, uh, because I keep it real, you know, and one other thing that we didn't bring up, but it is real important is surrender. Mm -hmm. You check your heart, check your gut, but surrender, ask for help, whether that's to whoever spiritual thing you believe in, Jesus, Buddha, God, whatever it is. If you're an atheist, surrender to the trees. You don't have to carry it yourself. You're not on this dream trip alone. You really aren't. Because you came from somewhere, you're going back to whatever that is. That's the longing. And everything happens for a reason. So I've gotten out of a lot of trouble by surrendering. 
uh, and just saying, you know, to the universe, help me out here, show me what I need to say. I did that before your show. And I don't know how it's working, but it <laughs> seems to be doing okay, you know. It's not really so important. Yeah, and surrender. So I love that. Thank you for bringing that up because surrender to me also means seeking actual human help like mentors, coaches, yeah. others that can help you get there because doing business is there are so many, as I said in the beginning of the show, it's so multifaceted. There are so many moving parts. You've got to get help or you will burn out. Can you do it? Probably, but it may take you 10, 15, 20 extra years to get the result. And by then you're burnt out. And so I always found out that the one thing that keeps most, especially the men from reaching success quicker is the, the ego. And, you know, you need to surrender, as you say, and put that ego aside and say, I could use some help here and embrace it and enjoy it. Um, I love getting help from people. I used to not like to ask for help. It's just, a, I don't know, I think we're born with this thing. Don't don't ask for help. You can do it yourself. Uh, but once I started opening up, wow, so did my life, so did my business. Everything just got better. So I yeah. love that, yeah. that word surrender. It's a great, yeah. powerful yeah. word. My goodness. I just look at the clock, brother. Yeah, so mightily successful what you did before the show because we're four minutes out and i'm having a blast i didn't realize how late we were getting into it um what i want to do is i like to close every show we're not quite there yet but i like to close every show with one question you kind of skirted on it earlier but uh, i'm not going to give away what it was just yet uh because it's been very profound in the responses i've been getting um i've done a little over 100, 180 shows i don't know the exact count but it's a little over 180 do these once a week that's all uh, i've been doing it for three years three plus years for this show and it's just an amazing question i kind of stumbled upon it asked it several times and thought wow this is pretty cool i'm loving this response before i do that i promised everyone who was watching live that they could win a five night stay at a five star a luxury resort compliments of the big insider secrets and we also have a gift from mr roth we're going to get to that as well so you can, for a moment, take your um, attention from this show, but listen, listen to this, write it down, and then go get to it after the fact. But I'm going to put it on the screen, so get ready to write this down. What you want to do, you want to go to the website, ryp.im forward slash vacation, ryp.im forward slash vacation, all lowercase, and there you can enter to win. And we will pick a winner later this evening. I'm not kidding. I know it's getting kind of late. We do it all the time. And I uh, can't wait to see who wins that this go around. And a little birdie told me that the one and only Kevin Roth has a beautiful, wonderful gift for everyone. So, Kevin, I'll put that up on the screen and let you take it away and do a quick description of what that's all about, if you're okay with doing that. Okay. Oh, okay. So it says, are you successful but feeling stuck, stressed, or out about what's next for your life so there's a little link you can click and i give uh a free 30 minute zoom session find out uh what i can help you with uh, see if you want to become a coaching client and uh it's it's free it's 30 minutes and also on the same website kevinroth.org there's a free stress buster five minute video that will uh, help you with that and then there's uh the next thing, which isn't free, but it's kevinroth.teachable.com. And that's the online course with eight modules, creating a life you love. There's the teachable. There's a learn more button that'll take you right there. And the stress, I like that five minute stress. Oh, I'm going to find that. And we're going to definitely check that out because I think there's some music involved in that. And uh, your, your music is so soothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So definitely everyone go to Kevin Roth. So it's K-E-V-I-N-R-O-T-H dot org. And basically scroll to the bottom of that web page. And that's where you'll see that contact form where you'll get to get on, hop on a Zoom call. And look, you can tell he's a nice guy. He's not going to bite. Uh, and if he does, it won't, he won't bite very hard. So it'll, it'll be painless and uh, you'll enjoy it. And then definitely take him up. Oh, there it is. Click here to get your free instant access to my five minute stress buster. Just click right on that the big in the black banner right there and uh, take advantage of these wonderful resources and then determine for yourself if this is a gentleman you want to take the next step with. Uh, and the reason for this show is not to pitch anything, but when I see something that's compelling, I always share it. 
I call it sharing. And this guy, Kevin, is not a hard sales uh, sales tactic kind of person. I can tell he will just talk to you. And here's an amazing thing that's going to happen when you guys talk. And this is how I do it as well, Kevin. It's pretty fun. Is you're going to find out if you're both a fit for each other during that chat. It's right. a two-way street. You know, as you're talking to Kevin, seeing if he's right for you, guess what? He will be thinking the same thing about you. And that doesn't mean to worry about it. It's not a test. It's just if you're a fit, you'll be a fit. And if not, that's okay. You'll you'll have a wonderful experience talking to him. Maybe he'll play a few notes for you while you're on the phone. Uh, <laughs> you down, but uh, my gosh. Um, all right. I, I almost forgot about the last question. And it's, it's like, we have to do this. This is the best part. So, uh, Kevin, this last question is... It's amazing. It's profound. It can be a little personal, uh, but the thing I found is there is no such thing as a wrong answer. It doesn't exist. And in fact, just the opposite is the only correct answer is yours. And that's really the only thing that makes it personal because it's unique to you. That's it. So we're not getting deep into your personal life. So with that, I know you're ready, but I will ask you out of respect, Kevin Roth, are you ready for that last question? Yeah, we'll, we'll give it a whirl. All right, here we go. Kevin Roth, how do you define success? Success is doing what you love and loving what you do. That's it. Mm, short and to the point. Be, be authentic. Be authentic. Absolutely. Yeah. And then go for it. And if you need help, I'm here. Uh, you know, Brian's there. Every, every, there's lots of help out there. Yes. Be authentic. Um, surrender. Be willing to surrender. Ask for help. Everything uh, you've said here tonight, Kevin, has been amazingly powerful, in my humble opinion. Uh, been down this path a little bit, a little down the road myself, gone through our own experiences and I resonate with everything you've been saying, and I just hope that everyone that's been watching or listening to this takes to heart what you've said and not just take notes, but now put those notes into action and go and put them into action. And if you're not sure exactly how to do that, then, you know, it's real simple. Reach out to the man, KevinRoth.org. You can find him right there. And I'm sure he's all over the Internet. Look for his name and look for his music. Listen to his music. He's got lots of that on YouTube and other places. It's very soothing. And get yourself in a wonderful state and then reach out to him and say, hey, I want to have a chat, brother. And guess what? He'll, he'll do that. Look at him. He's such a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's a he's a businessman. So don't forget that. Do it with respect. Know that it, it's valuable time and come ready to have your life changed in a positive way. Yeah. And tell me. And you know, tell me Brian show. Yeah. There you go. Any yeah. final thought you'd like to close with, Kevin? And if not, that's fine. But. I, I do have a profound thought for you. And I've been All thinking right. this the whole show. You ready? I'm ready. You're a terrific host and you ask great questions and you're a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. Thanks so much. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> see that coming. It's, and I, I love to lift people like you up higher than you. I mean, you're already up there in my eyes and I want to lift you up so others can see you above the horizon get the word out about Kevin Roth because you're doing truly amazing things with an authentic and amazing heart. And we need more people like you on this planet. So in the meantime, I'm going to do what I can to get the word out about you through this show and other avenues. So look him up, call him, uh, schedule that zoom chat with Kevin Roth, go to kevinroth.org, scroll to the bottom, fill out that form, get the five minutes of stress re relief from his beautiful music and his, his soothing voice. I mean, come on, hmm. what else would you what a, what a great thing. So, Kevin, thank you once again so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you, brother. That's it. It's a wrap. We have to go. Kevin's got things to do. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> on Thanks, behalf of you. Yes, you're so welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, what an amazing guy. That is Kevin Roth. I'm your host, Brian Kelly of the Mind Body Business Show. Until next time and one week from tonight, we will see you again. Until then, so long and be blessed, everyone. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com.
My name is Brian Kelly.